Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. And it's time to do something that we do from time to time here. It's time for Prophecy Bingo! Yeah, that's right. And one of the things I love to do is invite guests on to play Prophecy Bingo. And today I have invited, of course, Joshua and Nikki, who seem to be standards now on Prophecy Bingo. But our guest today is going to be... Justin Peters. Justin Peters, how are you today? Hey, Chris, I am doing really well. Doing really well. How about yourself? Doing great, and I'm looking forward to playing some Prophecy Bingo with you. I'm afraid that your uh, your reputation might take a hit. This is, you know, hanging out with pirates and doing Prophecy Bingo. This is not not what civilized people do. But uh, but then again, how, I like to say that, you know, bad company corrupts good character. But thanks for coming on and, and risking oh, it with my us. My pleasure, it has been a coon's age since I've played bingo, so I, uh, everybody has to let their hair hair down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think this isn't your grandfather's bingo. <laughs> yeah. No. Right. No. And, and I gotta admit, I, I I hate putting these segments together because you know I I have to slog through a whole bunch of pro- prophecies, you know, and you have to put that in air quotes that are just insane and and the thing is is that the more insane it is the better if the person actually seems <laughs> seems like they're somewhat reasonable and they're not exactly sure if they're hearing from god they don't make the cut you know so uh, right. but, <laughs> let, let's just say that um we've got we've got a good program set up today it's going to be a fantastic prophecy bingo we've got a new format here everybody can be seen visibly on the screen and i gotta warn you so the first gentleman we're going to be listening to is joshua august and the build up before he gets to the prophecy is going to take some time so we're going to have to do this in pieces that's the best way i can put it but so the december 2020 prophetic word uh this is joshua august and uh We'll just let this play out for just a little bit. There will be no, there, you won't be able to get any prophecy bingo words, by the way, at this point. And by the way, if you don't have a prophecy bingo card, uh, the dis- down in the description, we've got the prophecy bingo card uh, generator. Print yourself out a bingo card and uh, and we'll get to it. But here's here's Joshua August, at least, at least the intro. Does this count as sappy music? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> this, this is a first. This is a first. This is prophetic beatboxing, man. I've never seen this before. Okay. <laughs> I love how he just looked at us. What is that effect on that guitar? It's just... it, it sounds like it's being the audio is being put through sludge in a sewer. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it's being squirted out of a toothpaste tube, you know? No, it's definitely a three week old ketchup bottle after sitting in the sun, you know. There we go, there we go. <laughs> He's laying down some tracks here, man. Well, you know, Kevin Zadai went to heaven, and Jesus taught him how to play 14 different instruments. So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe this young man also got a. Maybe he can, uh, you know, book a trip with Cat Kerr or something. All right, the, the yeah. bill up takes a while, so I just wanted to like get us into this here, and uh, I, I better do this now. Here, I'm going to take free space while I can. Ding. So, so you would say maybe we're already off to a bad start. That's right. That's how Prophecy wow. Bingo works. <laughs> We've started on the wrong note, for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, let's uh, take a look at our next contestant. Now, this is a gal. Her name is Kama, and she didn't turn her video on. So I, I this uh, we're looking into the black void of prophetic darkness here. And uh, this was this was her vibe. This is what she chose to do. But uh, let's te- let's check in. Her, this is the prophetic word for December 2020. Uh, star face emoji, cross emoji, heart emoji with a little ding. Supernatural miracles all month. Prophecy by Kema Anku. 
All right, let's uh, listen in. Here we um, go. It's Coach Kama here. I hope that you're having a blessed and highly favored day. Oh, you know it. You know it. I always do, you know. A powerful prophetic word to release to you. Blessing. I declare December 2020 is going to be your month of miracles. Your month of miracles. Yay! We have miracles. We have miracles. We have miracles. <laughs> you have miracles? Yes, we have we miracles. Have miracle. We also have blessing. Yeah, she that says counts. Have a blessing. Yeah, it's two. Ah. <laughs> but, but but I don't have miracles. Oh. I don't either. You're not prophetic. <laughs> yeah, you're a cessationist. Oh, that's right. You're you're not. Oh, yeah. prophetic enough. <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Sorry, you're being logical again. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep going here. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. Job 5 9. Supernatural miracles are manifesting in your life in December 2020. I strongly suggest that you listen to this entire prophetic word from start to finish. No, I won't be doing that. It's already. Does anybody have manifest or supernatural? No, I don't have that. I got supernatural. All right. Oh, yeah. There you okay. go. Be, be sure to call them out. You don't just call it bingo. You call anytime you, you Yeah, get anytime you get a word, just let us know. You know, so, all right. In real time? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yep. That it helps me with the editing. That way, <laughs> that way Josh can add our favorite sound. <laughs> Ding. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's keep going here. Stand in agreement with it and believe that you will see divine manifestation. Manifestation. Amen. You're going to see divine manifestation. Yay. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kama Anku, Coach Kama, and I'm a life coach, a business mentor, an author, a speaker, a prophet. And a false prophet at that. Yes, yes. And a social justice activist. Now- uh, oh! Oh! <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's why he picked this, just for you. Oh! <laughs> okay. No! All right, let's change it up. Let's change it up. We're going to head over to Glory of Zion. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> here the, comes the sappy music. Yeah, there is a uh, divine. I was about to say, sappy music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that or yelling. Yelling might be one in here for sure. Uh, all right, this one's c- named. There's a divine exchange in the change. Divine exchange. Here we go. I saw a war mantle, and I'm like, where do I get a war mantle? So I- mantle. Mantle is a uh, prophecy bingo word. War- Not just any mantle. It's a, a war. war it's mantle. a war mantle. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, I'm backing this up. I saw a war mantle, and I'm like, where do I get a war mantle? So I Googled Army and Navy supply store, and I saw a war mantle fall. They don't sell war mantles at the Army Navy store. That's just a that's just camouflage oh my gosh. fabric. Oh, Military <laughs> surplus is not where you go for anything divine. <laughs> I should know. <laughs> I got to ask you, Justin, do you have a war mantle? You know, I've been meaning to get one for years now. And it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's on my it's on my Christmas list. I'm, I'm hoping I get one. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I'm yo, folks, if, if you year. know what to get Justin for Christmas now. He needs a good war mantle, so... I'm sure my ministry will be far more effective once I get it. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> oh man! All right, let's keep. No. We're, we're not going to get through this. I could just tell. No, no. Okay. Can we put this down here? I saw a war mantle fall on the altar, and the Lord. Hey, here's happy music. Yeah, that counts. So, yeah, yeah, happy music. We got it. Lay it down. <laughs> So can we all claim Sappy music? Yes. Yeah. If you got got Sappy music, it works. Did you notice that he also said, oh, we're going to, I saw the war mantle fall onto the altar. And so they're laying it on the stage, which is objectively not really an altar. Yeah. That's too Catholic. (laughs) Okay. Let's keep going here. 40. He said, you're in the middle of 40 years of change but you- he's got a ziploc <laughs> bag of coins there we go we found yes, we, we found the source of the coin shortage, sorry, sorry. shortage. <laughs> I, you can't do that because he's using the word change differently than what he's holding in his hand oh, no. 
okay? If I talk about it's time to change my shirt, I'm not talking about coins. I mean, that's kind of what they do when they try to translate words from, like, Hebrew to English, though, oh, so... I, I, we need to add a new thing to our prophecy being misappropriated, misappropriated English. English. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's, so keep, hurts. let's keep going. Coming into the season of great change. And he says, I'm pouring out great change. Can I pour it on the mantle? I want yeah. To pour it on, pour, pour it it's right not there. a mantle. Change. I'm pouring, pouring out hand. great change upon the earth. I'm pouring out great change. Woo! And, and we, yay! Make, make it rain. <laughs> this is insane. And if you'll walk through the change, they're gonna they're gonna have people walk through this. There's a divine <laughs> exchange in the change. I'll roll away the reproach off your blood. There's a divine exchange. Is there a reproach on your blood? A reproach on your blood. Yeah, it, it, mean, it's a it's a terrible thing when that happens. I think. It, yeah, it it is. I, maybe I should get a blood test and see if I have any reproach in my blood. I don't know. I mean, it, you know, honestly, you, you you watch some of these people and like you watch Sid Roth, and I I tell people with no hyperbole if, if somebody were to. If somebody were to hold a gun to my head and say, I want you to come up with something more loony than the last guest on Sid Roth or the last uh, service at uh, Zion, I, I would say, pull the trigger. I, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then when we're done, we'll hang your body from the walls of Bashan. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Prash will be uh, very pleased with that. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh man. Okay. Let, let, I want to see if they're gonna have people walk through. Change in the change. They're and walking says, through it. I'll even cause you over the next twenty years to dance in the change. This will not be a sorrowful change, but if you embrace the change, <laughs> that you'll even dance in the change. Wow. Says the Lord. Wow. Wow. No. Wow. Wow, wow is right. That if was, this was. Lego pieces that they laid down. I'd be more impressed. <laughs> oh, nobody could survive that. You know, you know, it's they, like I, they have, gold. they have fire walkers, but I've never seen a Lego walker. I've okay. actually seen a video of someone doing it to break a world record recently. His and feet. They, oh, and they, they were messed up. <laughs> it was bad. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to delete this one here. Uh, we'll come back to her in a second. Let's, uh, Come back to Joshua August as he's still laying down his prophetic beat here. Hang on a second. <laughs> and yeah, he's going to prophesy over that. Who would? <laughs> That's the natural thing to do. He's so happy with himself. Oh, he's scratching. Oh, man. You know, Sid Roth had a lady on his program a few years ago who said that her uh, she's so anointed when she plays her violin that people age Yes. Yes. Do you have I, that? I, do I, what? I can't find it. I, I don't have the original, but I no. actually covered it on the podcast years and years ago. And yeah. I couldn't help myself. But when, <laughs> when it came time for her, he did this big build up, and now she took the stage. And when she started playing her violin, I changed the audio to some kid like playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> <laughs> She, what did she say happened when she plays? The people do people, what? She's so anointed. Her playing of the violin is so anointed that people age in reverse when they hear it. Yeah. And you would oh. think that would be a best-selling album. I mean, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, I gotta find now. I gotta find that in in the archives of Fighting for the Faith because we covered that episode of Sid Roth the Supernatural years ago, and yeah. it was just it, I had so much fun with that segment. Oh man, I still remember it. All right, let's go back. So Joshua August is still laying down some prophetic tracks here. We did. Uh, we did, okay. This is a newcomer. Cassandra Bellevue is her name, and. Um, did she make those glasses herself? I don't even see glass in them. Uh, well, let's just almost, see where it almost looks like a filter. I I don't know what I don't I'm know. I think she's gonna physically take them off. Hang on, let's see. So when I was asking the Lord for the month of December, you know, I clearly heard him say the phrase, get ready for takeoff. Get ready for takeoff. <laughs> So when I heard that, like, I immediately got excited and I focused on the. How are, how is anyone supposed to take this woman seriously? I mean, she, it, I, it looks like she cut that out of a cereal box. box. Yeah. And, and, and the prophetic word is get ready for takeoff. I, t- hey, you heard it. You heard it here first. Airports are opening back up. Uh, the, Put your prophetic tray tables in the upright and locked position and make sure your seatbelt's fastened. I thought what? she was talking about NASA. I, d- I don't know. Let's keep going here. It- Part of the phrase that said, take off. Get ready for take off. Um, I know several of you are like me. You have things that you have been praying for, you've been pressing in for. And, you know, a lot of us are just ready for manifestations. A lot of us are ready for the answers to our prayers. And that's normal. And that's 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 totally legit. Um, you are um, totally okay feeling that way. You know, sometimes I feel like we get guilt tri- or we start to feel guilty. The enemy tries to make us feel guilty because, you know, we're pressing and we're praying and we're wanting to see manif- manifestations. Hey, that's like human nature. We want to see what we have been praying for. Um, So when I heard that, you know, I focused on takeoff. I was like, okay, it's about to go down. But as I mulled over this word with the Lord and I sat in his presence with it, I was just like, what are you really saying? Presence is a prophecy bingo word. What do you want me to highlight? What do you want me to, to focus on? I felt like he had me focusing on the first part of that sentence. Get ready. For takeoff get ready <laughs> so you know if you guys remember last month the word of the lord for the month was rest he was wanting us to get rest and he actually took us to um the passage of scripture the passage of scripture that he highlighted for me um for delivering that word was this passage in revelations where it talked about the woman who was um put into seclusion. The Lord hid her and he hid her in order to nourish her. And, um, yeah. Picture of the church, the bride of Christ. Okay. To kind of give her rest. But the scripture went on to talk about how he was fighting her battles for her while she was doing that. And so I feel like I've heard from a lot of you guys and you guys like felt that the word was for you. And I know it was for me personally. Um, it was an intense, month, the month of November, like, oh my goodness, it was an intense month of warfare for me, but he had me hiding, you know, he had me, re- not hiding, he had me resting, and he really did nourish me, and he really did build me up in the midst of all the intensity that was going on, just like that passage in Revelations. So when I was talking to him about this phrase, get ready for takeoff, you know, he had me focusing again on the get ready part, and he was just like, this is a continuation of what i spoke in november i was telling what does any of this mean i why would god be speaking nonsense the book of revelations yeah (laughs) this really feels like um this really feels like you know like uh like a horoscope but like with this very thin Veneer. veneer of Christianity to it, but yeah. when she's talking about some of you felt like that was for you, and you know, let's just... play the Christian word salad game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. So she was a, I, she's a wild card newcomer, uh, but uh, let's head back to Glory of Zion. The destiny oh. of my general is coming <laughs> forth. 
like, oh, I, I, I dare you to diagram that sentence. Okay, let's see what this is. <laughs> One of the first things that Janice and I and Donnie did when we came into this body is we gave you a, a helmet with five stars, and you took those five stars to Israel. But were you wearing your war mantle when you went to Israel with your five star helmet? Obviously, <laughs> five. The five star uh, general. I, I, how do these people think that any of this has anything to do with God? And the Lord says, "This is the day that the fulfillment of all of that is coming to pass. The thing I put in your destiny from the beginning destiny. is now coming forth." Hey, okay, and the Lord Justin got destiny. Were- nice. Yeah, destiny. Yeah, that is. Well, a- I'm sorry, I misspoke. I thought I had that word on my... I, I don't have that word on my card. I thought but it is a prophecy bingo word. It is a prophecy bingo word, though. Yeah, okay. My bad. All right. <laughs> Created He's practicing. to be a general of the troops that move troops across the earth. And the Lord said, you've sent no one yet compared to those you will send now. The Lord says you are sending redemption, salvation, and restructuring across the earth. Restructuring across the earth. Okay. And they're still walking over the chain. Hey, was she kind of yelling at the end of there? <laughs> not, not enough. Uh, no, 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 the decibels didn't go off the chain there. So. All right. Two five-star pins. The Lord gave me what? the word the same time that he's raising up five-star generals, generals of great grace. And today, the Lord is commissioning generals of great grace, and it's gold and silver, he said, The armies of heaven will march with the armies of earth. And this is now a worship warship. This is the deck of a worship warship. The flag. (laughs) (laughs) A warship worship. A worship. It's a worship warship. All right. I'm going to lay down a little bit of knowledge regarding military history. (laughs) And um, (laughs) the thing, he says five star generals plural. No, there could be, there's four star generals, but the five star general is the general of the entire military. There's yeah. not multiple five star generals. <laughs> yeah, there's ge- generally one of those generals. Generally Do you guys speaking. notice how much more like Santa Chuck Pierce is looking today than usual? <laughs> Should we have a Chuck Pierce Santa meter? <laughs> he, he's, he's getting real festive, I think. <sighs> Okay. On a scale of Chuck Pierce to Santa, how uh, how Santa are we today? <laughs> wow, a sliding, a sliding scale there. Okay, I'm gonna close that one. Let Let's see if Joshua oh, August is gonna prophesy yet. Uh, Why is he switching to this like this black, black and white? white. Yeah, that's it's it. like that's artistic. Yeah, it's really artistic, deep. man. It's really deep. It's a metaphor <laughs> for something. A, a, a <laughs> oh, it's awful. Uh, I, I need to give a warning to people. If you get this beat stuck in your head, it's not my fault. It's his. <laughs> How many views does he? Does anybody watch him? No, no, no. Three hundred seventy-seven. I think we we I, we've. <laughs> We're 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 a solid percentage of his entire audience at this point. We got, Avoid we, like the musical plague that it is. Yeah. Don't watch it. Yeah. Oh, this is hot off the press. This is oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is, this is this is a fresh word, man. Look how proud he is of his word. Good for him for enjoying his music. (sighs) This is a unique prophecy for sure. Points for uniqueness, yes. Points for style. Oh no, oh no, oh no. There it comes.
definitely sappy music. <laughs> that is sappy music. <laughs> okay. Yep. Moving along. Like All right, new, another newcomer. Up. This is uh, Siobhan Cherie, and she introduces herself as saying, "This is Siobhan Cherie TV." Okay, so she she's a TV uh, prophetess. So not, I kind of like that. <laughs> not not merely YouTube. She's TV. Okay, all right. Hallelujah. Welcome back to you, Siobhan Sweet TV. And I'm back again with another video, you guys. Honestly, I was in my prayer time. And listen, my prayer time looks a little bit different from everybody else's. The Lord can speak to me at any moment, okay? The Lord literally <laughs> arrested me while I had... Was that a humble <laughs> brag? What was that? No, did you see? She actually put, like, prophetic word at this timestamp. She is... Oh my goodness, she is ahead of the game here. She is actually <laughs> telling you when to skip. <laughs> All right, well, she's let's telling keep going. you how to skip to how, how to skip through the intro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hang on a second here. So, where was the prophetic word at? Anymore. At the twenty-five, 25. sec, ten whole seconds. Oh, <laughs> we, wow. we 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 got to go ten whole seconds here. <laughs> ten seconds of your life, you, you you don't have to be reimbursed for. Uh, let let's let's take the long road here, you know, and and get those extra ten seconds in. I get my hand. I'm telling you, I was cleaning, and the Lord started dealing with me about the month of December. He said, December is a month of decisions. You in the next coming days will have so many opportunities placed in front of you, so many doors placed in front of you. Child of God, hear me as a prophet. How many doors will there be placed in front of me? <laughs> you know, what does that even mean? Uh, okay, all right. You in the month of December will have so many decisions to make. It will be overwhelming for you. You will feel anxiety try to grip your heart. You will even feel fear try to creep up on you. you <laughs> There's sappy music. There it is. Oh, <laughs> gosh. You may even feel a disruption of your peace in your dream life because of the decisions that you have to make. There are so many decisions, child of God, in your finances. You got to make some decisions. <laughs> okay, so you just described just about every living person on the planet. I mean, right, we're all yeah. going to, yeah. have to make decisions in the month of December. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and their financial decisions, especially, you know, like who's going to be getting a nice Christmas present and who's getting a lump yeah. of coal, you know. Her her specificity is breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fortune cookie prophecy. There, all there's, of these are fortune cookie prophecies. But now. but here's the thing, the less specific you are, the more accurate you are. You know, truth. <laughs> you don't have to hit the target as long as you carbon bomb prophesy, the entire country. I prophesy that you will interact with people in some kind of capacity in the month of December. She's saying that people are going to break COVID lockdown. That's what she's saying. <laughs> it could mean that. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Let's keep going. In your here. relationships, you got to make some decisions. And I even feel by the Spirit of God, some of y'all need to break up. I said it. Yeah, you need to break up with that person. This is the confirmation that you're looking for. I need to break up with somebody. Or you got to make some decisions. I'm married. It doesn't work that way. Oh, man. She's so sure of that, though. I said it. No, some of y'all need to break up. She now. said it. She said yeah. it. She, she was there. so brave, so courageous to finally get it out there on the table. You know, so She doesn't know you. She doesn't know your relationship, but you need to break up. All right. Okay. About your salvation. You got to make some decisions about your purpose. Where are you going? What are you doing? What are you called to do? You got to make some purpose. decisions. I got purpose. Yeah, you, you got, got purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah right. that counts. Yep. All I'm right. A, I need to. I, I need. I need some better. I need some better prophecies here. I, Okay. about how you're going to operate in marriage, what kind of woman you're really going to be, what is it that you really believe, what is it that you really stand for, everything that you've been I, seeing I a, on. I have a that? question. Dad, yeah. what type of woman are you going to be? In your marriage, specifically. <laughs> you see, that that's just wrong. This, this, is, <laughs> this is why you cannot do these prophetic onesies. Yeah. <laughs> She cut out half the population right then and there. Yeah, well, if if I'm going to be a woman, then I'm going to be a lesbian. So, you know, I'm, I'm attracted to women anyway. So. Well, heard it here first. <laughs> Confirmation, Chris Rosebro is, in fact, Eat your heart out, big potato. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, everything that you've been stagnant about, everything that you pushed to the back of your mind, everything that you pushed on the back burner of your life, God is raising those things to be back in the forefront of your mind. He wants you to deal with yourself. He wants you to make some real decisions. He wants you to get mature in the faith. He wants you to grow and to evolve. I agree. God does want you to be mature in the faith and grow. Mm -hmm. And if you grow in your knowledge of the word, then you won't listen to this woman. Okay. Yeah, I nope. pretty much I that's about all I can handle of her. Okay. Oof. And like this is any better. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Another prophecy. I will deal with the noise around from Chuck Pierce. Here we go. And the Lord would say to you today, I am going to deal with the noise around you this week. The Lord says this will be a week that I start addressing noise that has invaded my people's atmosphere and i atmosphere atmosphere hang on a second i thought that was on my oh i got it <laughs> i got atmosphere. oh i got it too hang on a second here yay i got atmosphere ding okay. <laughs> kind of ironic that chuck pierce is talking about dealing with noise like yeah, I, I, know. Know. I, I feel like he's, he's, getting, ever he's, getting, he's really getting up there in the decibels, you know, starting to yell into that <laughs> microphone. Yeah, and he says things like this unironically, which is weird. Okay. Say the noise that rises up in the midst of the confusion that it creates, I will cause my people to rise <laughs> above the fray of the confusion. I say <laughs> to you, you will see what you've been longing to see this week. It's just so I've been, ironic. I've been longing to see Gloria Zion shut down. Uh, he you know. literally says nothing. I mean, nothing. He, yes. he drones on and on with this word salad. Of, of, he says nothing. It is absolutely meaningless. Oh, yeah. It's a complete nothing burger. I mean, that's exactly what it is. I, yeah. Pseudo profound sounding malarkey. <laughs> yep. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. All right, let's uh, let me close this up. And uh, uh, I, you didn't uh, see that, uh -oh. Josh. Uh oh. <laughs> let's go back to Joshua August. Here we go. Uh Justin, but it looks like he's having heartburn. <laughs> I don't, I'm no musician, but I don't think this guy's going to get any chairs to turn. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. I, I, uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But this is a prophecy, man. We, he's got to lay it down. So, uh, uh, man, how much prophecy, farther before prophecy, we actually the get the musical? I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward just a little bit because I, I the suspense is killing me here. Let's see what he does. Bring in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> bring he just brought in. the Holy He just brought the Holy Spirit in. He's getting serious, man. Reach out, bring I've been him in. Where he was. <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you, God. Well, let's just go for it. Yeah, please. Too. So I want you to know that. That this is a wonderful time of restoration and healing uh, from past trauma and drama. And I just want to encourage you, if you have to make a list of people to forgive or things going on in the past, to do that and to forgive those people. Don't let any of those hindrances stop you. You might even run into some of those people. It doesn't mean that they're part of your life. It doesn't mean, uh, you know, that you continue things with them, but there's closure and there's healing. There's, I mean, as far as like relationship advice goes, this doesn't even sound like good advice. You know, it's how really could this not. be a prophetic word? Okay. Amazing things going on with Christmas. A lot of people have been talking about it. And uh, there's just a healing that comes with spending time with family, a rejuvenation you can't find anywhere else. Depends on what your family's like. <laughs> you know that real, real family Christmas is just yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, that yeah, one's yeah. the worst. <laughs> and that's because your family is usually, you know, for you and they support you and they want to bless you. 
So I just encourage you to spend time with those loved ones, sing Christmas songs, because these types of things um, will really help you get... <laughs> this is the prophetic word. <laughs> just, just have some healing and sing some Christmas songs and stuff, because he brought the Holy Spirit in. But there is an anointing yeah. now for healing. Anointing from spiritual abuse, mockery, hurts, and things like that. And you want to make sure you forgive anyone you need to uh, to receive that. So make a list if you have to. Go through them one by one and forgive those people, okay? And I want to encourage you. Scripture does tell us to forgive others. You know, forgive as yeah. you forget. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't need this guy telling me that. The Scripture says that and, very clearly. And I, don't, and, I don't think we need to bring the omnipresent Holy Spirit anywhere, correct? My I, my I'm going to go with you on that. That's kind of the privileges of omnipresence is that yeah. you're... No, no, no. You this guy is just that good of a prophet that he can command the Holy Spirit <laughs> to come somewhere where he already was. So music so bad it will turn away thousands, but, but good enough that the Holy Spirit will still stick around. <laughs> okay. Just be positive over yourself. Jamlin Joel Osteen now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or Stuart Smalley. I'm good enough and I'm strong enough and gosh darn, people like me. Dollar store Osteen. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, all right. I can back in that up just to receive to that. So make a list if you have to. Go through them one by one and forgive those people, okay? And I want to encourage you to speak positive over yourself. And even in past failures and things like that, I heard the phrase, if at first you don't succeed, get up and try, try again. But speak over yourself. The Holy Spirit said that? <laughs> Holy yeah, he's dishing out empty original. platitudes now. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Spirit's run out of ideas, man. <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, using bumper sticker slogans. Yeah. Speak those words of the past that you're anointed, you're anointed in business, you're going to make it. You're going to have an incredible time. I heard uh, recently, you know, we're the beloved. You're the beloved of God. The hairs on your head are numbered. Don't forget, okay? And um, I heard that old song. My dad used to sing it all the time. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. And I want to encourage you, God can do anything, okay? Keep moving forward. That's kind of the whole point of being uh, omnipotent. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love the way I love the way that after he says something, he goes, "Okay, okay, just, okay, okay." All right, moving we'll along. That. Are you have you braced yourself, Josh? By the way, uh, Kay Nash and her husband announced that they're expecting. So, just you know, I'll let you know. All right, moving. Let's check in with the uh, prophetic word. Uh, strengthen the axe and get ready. All right, you guys, we're going to jump into what I'm kind of feeling from the Lord today. Kind of feeling from the Lord today. Yeah, can, I, can I throw some in here real quick? Sure. Here from charismatics, all, and even and even non-charismatics, but I feel like the Lord, I, I kind of feel like the Lord is saying to us, said no one in the Bible ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nowhere. I mean, Could you imagine you're... Isaiah confronting Ahaz? You right. know, ask the Lord for us. I kind of feel like the Lord is saying, "Ask for a sign." You know, feel like and I kind the of Lord might be trying to tell it. Yeah, no. The word of the Lord came to Isaiah. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, yep. Any, anytime yeah, you hear that, I feel like the Lord. You just write that out. I would love to see a video sketch of Isaiah coming for it. You know, kind of Jesus hey, said in my heart. Kill him now. Yeah, and then and then you can ask the question. Do you, do you, do you feel a confirmation uh, about this word that I might be getting? Do you feel it? Uh, yeah. Are you feeling All it right. now? I think we're really it? needing to focus towards the end of the year. It's coming up quicker than you would think. Um, as of taping this video, this is 38 days left of 2020. And I really felt from the Lord that it's time to focus and to sharpen the ax. Hallelujah. All right, let's go into this. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, sharpen the ax. Here's Johnny. Okay. Yeah. Strengthen the <laughs> ax. Make it sharp. Increase discernment by slowing down. 
breathe. Many of my children are holding their breath, breath. but I am on the move. Get ready. Your readiness matters as I will flow with you and through you. A new flow. fire is flow. That's yeah, fire. that's the, I think. Yeah. Did you say you got something? I, I have breath. Not oh, that, no. that count. Nice. Yeah, that, that'll we'll, we'll give it to you. You give yeah. it to me. Yeah, uh -huh. you got it. This is a charity up. game. Repeat, a new fire is coming, and my glory will be shown like the cloud, and I will repeat many promises, and many promises will come to pass this year. The year is not over yet. Yelling. Yeah, she's yelling. 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 There's yelling. yelling. Uh, there yeah. Is. Yeah, that counts as yelling. What did I tell you? Am I not y'all? Can I still? <laughs> Am I not y'all? Am yeah. I not y'all? Yeah. Y'all. Yeah. That's not the first time that we've seen her do that, is it? That's not no, thing, no. Right? Yeah, it, it, God's name is Yahweh. All Yahweh. right, it is. Yeah, but am I not Yah? It's what is this okay. truncated thing? It sounds like it's from, his new slang version. It sounds like well, from, uh, I, I would actually. Uh, I, that's going to be misappropriated Hebrew. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bada bing, bada Ding. boom. Yeah. Now, by the way, you know, you can, you know, the words like hallelujah, you have, yeah. you have yah in there, uh, but it's a reference back to Yahweh, <laughs> you know, right. um, for God to say, am I not yah? That's definitely misappropriated. Hebrew, it sounds like, saying. I don't know, like hick Jesus from down south. Yah, what's up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Let's keep going not here. Do it. During Hanukkah, there will be a move strongly focus and pray. Hanukkah? Since when is Hanukkah a Christian uh, thing? <laughs> Even these sure sentences. Hanukkah is not a big event on God's calendar. <laughs> even the, just, these sentences just don't even make sense. There will be a yeah. move a, strongly. A, a move strongly. I mean, does she make yeah. a strong move? I mean, a move strongly. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think these people need to be taught how to you properly use adverbs. You know. They, I don't think they know how to use I mean, them. Don't, don't get me I'm wrong on this, but I think going over the, grave. the creator yeah. of the universe should at least know how to use proper grammar since the entire yeah. idea of grammar was his idea in the first place. I'm going to go with you on that one. Yeah, You know, my other favorite thing about this prophecy is the bit where she says that um, t in order to increase discernment, you have to slow down. I don't think that that's how that works. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm under the impression that in order to increase discernment, you have to read the scripture. Yeah. I'd yeah. That, that's, I'm I mean, going to go with you on that one. That, Cause that's where you can hear the voice of God for real, you know, in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's keep going on this one. Let's see. This kind of all started when the Lord kind of highlighted this verse to me. This was a kind of highlighted this verse, whatever. <laughs> She's the 10, 10. If the axe is dull and one doesn't sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but skill brings success. Now, this is such an interesting verse because sometimes we are putting too much pressure on ourselves because we simply have not sharpened the axe. And for many of you, that might look different. Maybe you just don't have. All right, I'll put it on my to do list, you know. <laughs> What is that verse even actually talking about? She just ripped one verse out of context. Yeah, that's kind of the point when you put it back in context. It's talking about, you know, doing things skillfully, you know, and not overdoing effort, you know. So it, it's, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it, it's kind of in there like with the Proverbs in that sense. Of the correct education, and you're just going harder and harder and harder, but you're hitting a wall, hitting a wall, hitting a wall. You know, the Bible says, for a lack of knowledge, my people perish. And so maybe you're kind of feeling like you're perishing when <laughs> if you kind of got the skills and training that you needed, maybe you wouldn't be perishing, okay? Oh my goodness! <laughs> that wasn't even a full verse. Are, are you perishing? I you know because you because you didn't go to college. You know, and it, this is wow. And it might not be educational training. It might be spiritual training. It might be you did. Yeah, you clearly didn't get a good spiritual training there, Kay. And you know what? So, People are perishing for that. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, for lack of real knowledge. Literally Yikes. need to deal with some things. You need to fix some things. Because sometimes we feel like we're hitting a wall, but maybe if our axe was sharper, Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you feel... I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus, uh, yeah. Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's her tick. That's like her giveaway yeah. that yeah. she's fumbling. So she spits out random words in order to... Yeah. Get herself We're back wait, I'm waiting for her to say Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Although I don't think I have it on my card. I'm kind of bummed about that. But like see. you're hitting a wall, but maybe if your axe was sharper, you could chop through that wall. Are you? I knew she was going to say that. <laughs> I knew she was going to say that. Insert, yeah. insert the sh um, shining meme. Oh Here's my Johnny. You know. Yeah, yeah. I was like, tell me she's not going to go there with this. She she went there. She uh, went. You know, honestly, if she was. No, oh, continue. Go ahead. If she was really super spiritual, she'd be able to just pass through the wall rather than having to break it down. That's right. Can't cat care somebody? Do uh, that? Oh well, I'm ta I'm talking to uh, Hogwarts, you know, with Bethel and stuff like that. Oh, walking, or yeah, walking yeah, through whoever, walls yeah. and you mm -hmm. know, she just doesn't have enough faith apparently. Is hey, she oh. related to Priscilla Nash? I have no idea. You know that Priscilla I don't Nash know. Another charismatic. Uh, I'm just wondering if that's maybe her mother or something or. Well, um, is, tell you. is is Nash her married name? Yes, I do believe it is. Oh, okay. So, well, it could be her husband's mother. Yeah. I suppose. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. They, yeah. I that could know. be. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Let's 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 keep not this. warriors like Joshua. Can you not defeat the enemies in your promised land? Of course you can, but maybe your axe is dull. Can't defeat the enemies in your promised land, but maybe your axe is dull. So I she needs that the, war mantle. Yeah, that's that would help her a lot. Yeah. Maybe your prayer life is dull, and you're just not putting the time and the effort into it. So you're trying to defeat demons that are just too strong for you, and you got to put that time and effort into the prayer closet. You know, the Bible says this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. Sometimes you got to get in the prayer closet and just continue to pray because the thing is, what you do in the secret, God rewards in the light. If you really want the power over certain demons, you got to do the secret time to get that power, okay? What not, on earth? That's not how that one works, honey. Oh. Um, Justin, how much secret time do you put in every week? <laughs> secret time? I'd, I'd have to say none as far as, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what secret time is. Um, <laughs> this might explain your inability to defeat demons, you know, certain right. ones. It, at yeah, least, probably know. why I'm, I'm crippled, too. She's, uh, she's telling you to hit the gym, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, Pastor. Oh, now, Pastor. Yes. Uh, point of order, if you will. Can human beings themselves defeat demons? No. No. Well, gee, no. isn't that funny that Kay would tell us that we can do that? If we just yeah, work hard enough, I, I would note I was when on that text that she was misquoting. You know, uh, so Jesus comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration. It's a, it's a famous account, and uh, a, while he was on the Mount of Transfiguration with uh, Peter, James, and John, uh, a father brought his son who was demonized, and this demon was trying to kill this kid, uh, like throwing him into fire and you know, trying to drown him in rivers and stuff like this, and it's it's an amazing account. Um, and so the remaining disciples were unable to cast that demon out, even though Christ had given them authority over the demonic. And uh, and so G they, Jesus comes down the mountain and uh, you know asks what's going on, and the fellow explains you know that he you know had brought his de uh, demonized son, and then he says, "If you can do anything, please help us." And Jesus says, "If if." He says, "All things are possible for the one who believes," and he and this is that famous account. Then the uh, the father says, "Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief." And and that's really kind of the nubbins of that uh, of that text. And then later in the side in the text, it says that the other disciples came to Jesus and says, "Why couldn't we cast this one out?" And he said, "This kind only comes out by prayer and fasting." And now I always like to point this out to people. It's like. The one thing uh, you don't see happening in the scriptures are, you know, 
uh, you know, like, you know, some kid with, you know, a, a demon with their head spinning around and their projectile vomiting and all this kind of stuff and people with crucifixes and, you know, I compel you by the name of the Lord and all this kind of, not, none of the stuff that you see going on uh, in the in the showmanship that you see, uh, you know, like, what is it, what's that one guy who claims that he's an exorcist and trains exorcists, you know? Oh, Bill, uh, Bill somebody, I think. Uh, Bob Larson. Uh, Bob Larson, oh. Bob Larson. You don't, you don't see that really going on in the scriptures. And so I always tell people, if you if you legitimately believe that you're encountering something very powerful or demonic, mm-hmm. pray, pray. And and if you're not, and if that doesn't seem to be doing the trick, add fasting into the mix, you know? And, and, and it's like, that's, this is the way, in, in fact, when you look at then like Ephesians 6 and the, uh, and, you know, and the armor that we're given, the one of the orders we're doing we're given is to stand our ground and to pray, you know. So uh, you know, prayer is not a small thing. It's like almost everything when it comes to these things. And yeah. and so you know, you you want to engage in real legitimate spiritual warfare, pray. You know, that's that's this is how this is done. You know that Absolutely. that pastor. Now, who, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, since we're talking about spiritual warfare, I, I say a hearty amen to everything Chris said. The, the real spiritual warfare is not swashbuckling demons and binding Satan, you know, and all these yep. people binding Satan. Someone sure keeps letting him back out. So, you know, maybe I'll go find the fellow who keeps letting him back out and bind him first. But um, I would I would commend to folks. I don't know how well this is going to show up for a very good book. On spiritual warfare. This is a book entitled Truth or Territory by uh, Jim Osmond. Okay. Truth or Territory, a biblical approach to spiritual warfare. And it takes all of these common things like binding Satan, rebuking Satan, territorial spirits, generational curses, all that stuff. And he just uh, lays it bare and shows how all of these things are unbiblical and uh, uh, that, that real spiritual warfare is a battle for truth. Yeah. It's not, yeah. um, we're not trying to take back territory from Satan where it's a battle for truth. It's a battle for men's minds. Yeah. So uh, anyway, shameless plug there, but there we go. All right. Good yeah. plug and well, good point. I, I was also going to say too, that I, I don't remember, I can't remember his name right now, but the, um, the Lutheran pastor who wrote the book about um, some of his experiences in Madagascar, that's all about. Um, yeah, I can't remember his name well. off the top of my head, but I know who I, you're talking about. I think his first name is Robert, but I, I don't remember. But uh, sort of the thesis of his book, if you will, is that there's only one exorcist and that that's Christ. Yep. You know, not not man, not a priest, not a pastor, not, you know, by our own power, but. Christ is the one who is able to cast out demons. Yep. Yep. And it's nice to, you know, have that off of my plate as things to worry about. If I if I suspect oh, yeah. I'm dealing with a demonic, I'm on my knees praying to the one who can get rid of the demon. You know, right. yeah. if if the if the strongest ones only go out by prayer and fasting, uh, the 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 less strong ones get flicked away just by simple <laughs> prayers. You know, I don't even have to worry about. It. I don't have to engage yeah. them, talk to them, or anything like that. And, All right, and it's it's interesting, real quick. It's interesting in Jude. The, um, Jude refers to false teachers, the ones who go around reviling angelic majesties. Yep. Uh, you know that that so someone who goes around rebuking Satan and I bind you, Satan, and all that kind of stuff. That that's a hallmark of a false teacher. Yep, then, and in Jude it says that not even the angels do that. The the angels exactly. will say to the de- you know to the, the to the devil, the Lord rebuke you, but they don't Michael even. The archangel wouldn't do it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. So, yep, indeed. All right, so uh, here's our next contestant. Uh, this is Ben Lim from Ben Lim Glo- Global, and uh, the prophetic word for the month of December. Here we go. But I'm telling you, you're going to close and finish 2020 with a big bang. In the name of Jesus, someone say amen. And it's beautiful to see, again, what's happening in the stock markets, okay? Listen, I prophesy about the stock markets all the time because that's how God uh, has has caused me to operate, okay? Caused me to function. God causes you to function through the stock market? What? Man, 2008 must have been a really bad year for you. Yeah. We prophesy into businesses, I prophesy into regions, I prophesy into the nation of America, into the stock market, the economy, the wealth of God's people. 
So don't say amen, okay? Uh, well, when word. is the stock market of the wealth of God's people? I got wealth transferred. Does that count? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> count it. Count you, it. You can't override the pirate. Uh, oh, didn't, wait, I, did he say wealth? He did say wealth. We, we, have, we, we wealth. have wealth. Uh -huh. We have just the word wealth by itself. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have the I, it, wealth transfer is a very specific thing. Oh, if you I have got wealth, wealth you, I got wealth anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, so hey, then you don't go. get. Hey. Yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. I've almost got a bingo here. No, yeah. no, you, you you can't you can't beat the pirate. I cheat. Yeah. I'm shy of a bingo. <laughs> the big if, if, they yeah. victory, if I hear what, the word, victory, what I'm word bingo. do you need? Victory. I need the word victory, and I bingo. All right, I'll see Ooh. if I can avoid those prophecies here. And, uh, <laughs> it's incredible what God's doing in the stock market. And the Lord told me, said, "Get ready for a big boom and a boomerang, and skyrocketing in the stock market." Even in the month of December. Amen. Okay. Someone said, Amen. Someone said, I receive it. And of course, just a few days ago, the Dow uh, hit 30,000. It's the highest number that it's ever reached in American history. So it is a season, as I posted, uh, as I prophesied in the beginning of the year, as, as it was posted on the Elijah list and many other prophetic forums. That 2020 is a year where world records will be broken. I want to tell you right now. 2020 is a year where world records. Aren't there world records broken every year? You know? Well. Yeah. That, that okay. doesn't matter. Because this time he, God I'd is ordaining it. going to be an earthquake. <laughs> a shaking. Yeah. There, there's got to be a shaking. It's if, gotta California, be a shaking. if California has too big of a shaking, who knows? Yeah, yeah, that'll make the news. Don't you are going there. to break some records, even in this month of December. Some. I'm going to break some records. What? What am I qualified? Which records am I qualified to break? Longest time sitting on your keister, not doing anything physical. I mean, what are we talking about here? Your Billy yeah. Joel music album, you know, vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Right. Even in the month of December, you're about to break some records. So I'm saying, amen. All right, give me some hearts and likes here, people of God, and do share, share. And um, and of course, one of the words that the Lord gave me recently is that Christmas is coming early this year. No, it's not. It's coming on <laughs> December 25th. <laughs> I need, I need, a, I need, I need a pen to send in my, my calendar's all messed oh up now. I don't know. Uh, uh, you can just see all these people going, wait, what? I don't, how many, how many shopping days do I have left if it's coming early? You know, <laughs> I was planning on it being here on the 25th. Oh, no. You know, <laughs> is he the Herald camping of Christmas? I, I that's oh. hilarious. He's that's a, funny. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's, oh man. Let's keep hey, going. Christmas. Someone say Christmas is coming early this year. Once again, <clears throat> Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, was not born this month, okay? He was born in the in the time of Sukkot. Definitely misappropriate Hebrew the here. time of the Feast of Tabernacles, which was right around uh, October time, okay? How do you know this? Um, and so theologians and scholars believe that Jesus was born in the Feast of Sukkot, of Tabernacles. Which ones? I mean, I, I, I've seen speculations along these lines, and the closest people can come up with is maybe June or July. But, uh, you know, I no one's got a definitive answer to this. How did you come no. up with October? You don't know you when know? Jesus was born. Yeah. Not in December, Christmas time, okay? But still, we celebrate and we love Jesus. It's all good, all right? Don't get your panties in, in a rough, right? Uh, <laughs> in a what? In a what? In a rough. Don't get your panties in a rough. That's what he said. What I on earth? A, I don't know if that's a malafor or... I, I don't know what that is. Don't, don't yeah. get a twist. All right. Jesus was born in Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. According to prophecy... According Which one? ...to him and his cousin John the Baptist being born. Okay? That time frame difference. Did he say Haman... No, I think he said him and, and his John, cousin. And John the Baptist. Him and okay. his cousin, John okay. the Baptist. Okay, all right. And uh, so, but still, I believe Christmas has come early. Someone say it with me. Christmas is coming early. This That is so controlling and manipulative. Say with me, Christmas is coming early. 
Yeah, that, that's such a controlling technique, man. It's just bizarre. Christmas is coming early. What does that mean? The father is a giver of gifts. He's the father of life. He loves to give gifts. So gifts are being released. Mantles are being deposited. God is releasing his blessings. Things are coming down like snow, like rain, like never before. In the name of Jesus. So blessings are coming down. In the name of Jesus, all right? So Christmas is coming early. So expect suddenly. Suddenly <laughs> is a... Prophecy bingo word. Okay, so quick question. So he said deposited mantles. We've had in the previous video had mantles drop. Um, what is the yeah. proper verb or adverb for this? Uh, for these, um, you know, mantles. I'm not for the passing of a mantle. Yeah, exactly. What I don't know. I don't know what the proper. I, I don't. I would need to or. check the book of armaments. I I'm not sure. Obviously, so. <laughs> it's totally different depending on the mantle. A war mantle comes in on a tank. Um, right. but, uh, but, it was uh, in a military surplus story. There was no tank there. <laughs> Unless, of course, I mean, no, that's how it real... got to the military surplus. Ah, uh, it came Rode in on a tank yeah, instead tar- of a white horse. Tearing up the streets while doing yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then somebody, somebody I, 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 I don't know. This, this, this is beyond my prophetic ability here. I don't think that's... this man has ever heard of Advent, by the way. <laughs> Christmas is coming no. early. It's like, yeah. no, we got we got Advent first. That There's a reason for yeah, that. Does this man look Advent. penitent to you? No, no. Let's keep going. Things are coming quickly, more quickly than you thought, more quickly than you expected. Someone say amen. No, I won't. But I want to talk to you about the prophetic word of the month for December. Pray. He hasn't even given that yet? Okay. He's got for December. Uh-huh. He's got. <laughs> what, what was that? I, that's, was that a nervous laugh? I got December. nothing. I'm going to be winging it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, tongues, tongues. Oh, wait, I, I feel a translation coming. I feel a translation coming. And the translation is download. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have it. <laughs> yeah, I, so I'm going to put that in. By the way, was prosperity one of the words? You know? I could... Maybe. Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, I, 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 I know. I know. Purpose, and edit. purpose was. Yeah. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix it in post. Why would we always fix it in post? Always in post. Ah! That's a that's a safe thing. Okay, let's keep going here. For the month of December, praise the Lord Jesus. Drum roll, please. Ooh, shababa. <clears throat> There's a wonderful Jewish feast holiday in this month of December, and it is Hanukkah. Someone say Hanukkah. Oh, here we go again. Oh, God. Oy vey. It All sounds right. so <laughs> lame when there's nobody there. It sounds yeah, even lamer. Oh. Yeah, it's like he's playing it on his iPhone or something, you know, the, the sappy music in the background. Oh, I, I know. I'm talking about the somebody say, somebody say. Uh, yeah, I know. It. it sounds so lame. It it's, sounds lame normally. It sounds formulaic. But... It sounds really awful normally, but it sounds extra bad when you're just by yourself and nobody's responding. Yeah. All right. It's let's keep bad. Going. So, of course, the pagans have to make a knockoff. Like, you know, when you got a Gucci knockoff. When you got a handbag knockoff, the pagans have to do a knockoff of the original. And the original holiday of December of this month is Hanukkah. Someone say Hanukkah. Okay, Lord, I pray. The fire of God. Shoo. Whoo. I, I, I got to move on. <laughs> this guy. I, no. I want right. to know where he's getting this, that Hanukkah was the original holiday because... Uh, I, I don't have no think idea. That that's correct. Yeah, no. All right, let's hear. And the Lord says, if you want to see new manifestations in this season, you're going to have to break agreement with the familiar. You're- she said manifestation, and she said manifestations. Peace. Yes. Um. So uh, again, Justin, have you broken agreement with the familiar? Not of which I'm aware. No, I've no. I don't even know what that means. What you you have to be intentional about breaking your agreement with the familiar if you want to see manifestations of the miraculous. You do yeah. know that, right? I can't Is even she... say that I've broken a relationship uh, with the unfamiliar. I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. We're going to have to break, yeah. break agreement with the familiar. Yeah, well, yelling at me doesn't make it any clearer as to what you're talking about, lady. <laughs> it's almost like a divorce. You're going to have to divorce and annul this agreement with the familiar because the Lord is saying the new day has begun. The new day has begun, but you're going to have to decide in every moment, every day, I'm coming into a new place of submission. I'm coming into a new place of humility because you are the rock that is higher than I. Because you are the rock that is higher than I. Surely you know the way to victory. Surely you. Oh, <laughs> no. We have victory. Victory. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> if you hadn't have said it, I probably would have missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so Justin Peters comes on and stomps us. It's uh, bingo right out of the shoot, man. Woo. Well, did, uh, hey, we got to get, really gotta get, get a. A bit of a, um, you know, I, I said, does breath count for breathe or breathe count for breath rather? And y'all let me slide on that. So oh, if I took that off, I'm, oh, yeah, you're oh no, no, you're good, you're good. Yeah, you know, but we we still gotta we gotta we gotta torture you a little bit farther because oh, yeah. the, the bingo cards you could get double bingo. Sometimes you have to win by getting double. So. And you can get double. Lord, Lord. Uh, hang on. We have to hear. We have to hear his prophecy. I think. That's oh, the, that's right. Is that that's the right, Justin. Yeah. yeah. Right now. All right. Yeah, now. Right now, we, we we need to hear you prophesy using your actual words that you got bingo with. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, how the turntable. Okay. So Sam, you use huh? your use your Ken Copeland voice. <laughs> COVID nineteen. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> I declare you gone. <laughs> uh, you know when you watch that clip of Kenneth Copeland, you can tell that it takes George Pearson by surprise. It, like, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, we're doing this now. <laughs> <laughs> totally unprepared. Oh uh, man! Okay, so so I have to use my bingo words to give a mm -hmm. prophecy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it just just give us some word salad, man. It has to include those words, but it's not ex exclusively those words. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Breathe. Oh gosh, I don't even know. Gosh, I'm I'm so this is so out of my. It's, it's best to just jump in and just make it word salad. It's it's still going to be better than anything we've heard tonight. Me prophesying anything is feels so unnatural. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! We tortured. We tortured. Poor, poor Jesse won't survive the experience. He did, we he did not know what he signed up for. Did he? <laughs> Reputation gone. <laughs> did you hear? I can just see Prash now. Did you hear that Justin Peters gave a false prophecy and Confirmed Rose Bro encouraged it? <laughs> Yeah, Confirmed yeah. hypocrite. Chavez, Joshua Trump. Chavez is going to uh, put put this in a, a video. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, man, breath. I mean, you you think of the breath of God. I can't even. I can't even make myself say that. I, can't, I literally can't even verbalize the words. Uh, oh, I, I prophesy that you will have a new purpose of victory in your life and there will be an, an, an anoint a wealth anointing a, a double portion of the wealth anointing <laughs> that will come on to your life in the in the month of December there will be a new a double portion wealth anointing to give you purpose <laughs> and victory and fresh breath <laughs> That was so I love, that was awesome. That With was fresh so bread. <laughs> oh, honey, the new fresh bread's <laughs> ready. Yeah. I need that bread. fresh bread mantle. Anyway, fresh bread mantle. <laughs> A fresh uh, bread mantle. <laughs> yeah, but you, you see how it works. I mean, yeah. I mean, which I mean, obviously, you know, you you did that tongue in cheek. 
But the point is, these people are are spewing this word salad and trying to pass this off as something that comes that comes from heaven itself, and it's just nonsense, you know. So, all right, let's yeah. uh, let's move on to the next one here, and uh, because you never, oh no, Nisi, she yells too sometimes. Oh um, gosh! All right, hang on. We I don't know if we're gonna have our hair burned off. I heard you know a couple of times ago. It's like I was like hanging on for dear life when she was prophesying. Hi, friends. Go. It's Nisi, and welcome to Prophetic Fire, where we release very timely and accurate prophetic words directly from the heart of God. <laughs> accurate. Please define <laughs> accuracy. Okay. Well, here we are on Saturday, and I am so excited to join you on this wonderful Lord's Day. And boy, do I have a word for you. So let's jump right in. Oh, hey, she has an intro. So this week, the Lord took me into a very powerful encounter, and he began to speak to me very clearly about what he desired me to prophesy over his sons and his daughters. I heard the Lord say very clearly, I am bringing many into a place of rest, but my rest looks different from the world's concept of rest. The Lord said, my rest is a place of total trust and deep abiding. It is a place of being so deeply and intimately connected to me that you feel my nearness holding you, supporting you, and giving you my life and my strength to endure. Oh, the Lord spoke and he those are the it, kinds of things that creep me out, man. You no, know, no, yeah. right? I thought that Ken Ash said that last month was rest. This I, month I, is something new. I don't know, but if if the prophetic word from the Lord sounds like it was written by a stalker, uh, you know, you can feel my nearness next to you. Okay, I'm I'm out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and now the new song by Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay, let's keep. This is like Sarah Young, Jesus calling, kind of. Oh yeah, oh, it's, yeah. It, Very it's much. just as bad. Yeah. Said, my rest is a place of joy in the midst of suffering, and it is a place of peace in the midst of turmoil. And beloved, I really want you to hone in on that final sentence because the Lord began to deal with me about emphasizing the fact that rest is a spiritual state. And what I mean by that is that rest and entering into the place of rest that God has for us is a condition of our spirit that is not dependent upon what's happening in the world around us. Now, beloved, let me just tell you, the Lord has been speaking to me about what's coming in the days ahead. And I will release a prophetic word in December about the year 2021. But let me me just tell you, and this is a massive spoiler alert, things are just going to become more and more intense in the world. Because the reality is, is that the Lord is shaking every... Shaking. Mm-hmm. Hang on a second here. Ding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to close him. Let, let's start. Oh, uh, thing oh, that go. can be shaken. But here is the reality that he desires for his sons and his daughters to realize. And that's that what can't be shaken is that which is rooted in him. Oh, I need you to hear what I'm saying today. The Lord told me to come on here and to prophesy over you that you are unshakable. Oh, no, really, I am. I'm very shakable. And so are you. Yeah, there's a there's your false prophecy. Yep, that's right. I mean, wow. I mean, you know, tell tell that to tell that to Asaph in Psalm seventy three. Tell that to John the Baptist. Tell that to the Apostle Paul. And you look at the yep. the suffering that he went through that he listed out in Second Corinthians eleven, and he even refers to himself. Paul does as depressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
Yeah. I no, mean, we are, we are quite shakable. I mean, tell yeah. that to Jesus in the garden, praying that, you know, the, the cup of wrath would pass from him. Or even in the sense to, of, of being tempted to sin. It, it almost sounds like she's saying, you're not going to fall to sin. You're yeah. unshakable. You can... I, I and, and the thing is, pride oh. comes before a fall. I mean, mm-hmm. I dare not start a day off by claiming I'm unshakable. Yeah. In fact, mm-hmm. I, I generally start my days with praying, Lord, please, through your Holy Spirit, give me the strength today to resist the temptations of my own flesh, the world, and the evil one. You I know, mean, I, 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 you know I, sta- I don't stand a chance against that unholy trinity. I mean, what know? happened to the unsinkable ship? <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's at the bottom of the Atlantic right now. Um, I, yeah, I, I, when it was during its maiden voyage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's let's go a little farther with Nisi. The way here. that you stand in that place. Of- She's yelling at me. Being unshakable <laughs> uh-huh. is to be so rooted and so grounded in him, so rooted in his character, so rooted in his very life flowing through you that you remain in the place of rest, in the place of peace, no matter what happens in this world. It always feels like I'm getting prophetically scolded when I listen to her. Yeah. So, so if you do get shaken... You're yeah. just not a good enough Christian. No, no I clearly haven't no, whatever no. I, I needed to do. You're not here. rooted enough in God if you get yeah. shaken. And by the way, I, since I cheat, uh, it says urgent prophetic word, get in position. The word position is sitting there right there. And, you know, I need that word. So I'm just going to get that word. <laughs> it counts. Oh, what a cheater. <laughs> I mean, she put in the title. I think that works. Yeah. <laughs> He's still a cheater, though. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, oh yeah. Of course, I I never make any apologies for cheating here. Okay, I, how's your guys' German accent? Oh, it's this guy again. <laughs> <laughs> the PBS bubble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's gonna sprechen Sie prophecy here, and sprechen uh, Sie <laughs> prophecy. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the next video of Triple Grace. My name is Michael. I'm the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Bus Movement Foundation. And this is a prophetic word for the months of December. And I title it The Birth. After we had you an have October. birthing on your card, don't you, Dad? Mm hmm. I'm taking it. What is it? <laughs> You're <What>? birthing. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still nowhere. Oh, why, why did I keep this guy up? Oh, I think yeah, sympathetically. No, no. Uh, the <laughs> crowning, the crowning of the baby just before the birth. And in November, we had the return of the king. Who will all- okay, hang on a second here. I'm going to do a prophetic mashup. I've never done anything like this before. I'm going back no, in time. No. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Watch this. To bring us forth and burst us forth. Sorry, into our destiny. Then now we have the birth. Because this is an extraordinary month for extraordinary remnants who have come together in the army of kings and priests to be the forerunners for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Waiting for him to come to transform us into his image and to his into his glory so that we can fulfill our destiny and purpose here on earth. The sons of God are extraordinary, and this is the month of their birth. So it's written in Romans, I think Romans 8, where it says that the whole world is groaning for the bursting force of the sons of God. This is the time. You are all who have separated yourself, standing with us together in unity and love support, who are embracing the former reign. You are extraordinary. You are special people. You are chosen vessels. As Moses was a chosen vessel who went at the months of Siwan into the clouds. And this is a corresponding month to the month that we are going into now, into the ninth months. <laughs> Moses went into the clouds, and we, as the sons of God, will also go into the clouds. Where we... <laughs> Did he say I'm a chosen vessel? Oh my goodness. It's weird how that worked, isn't that it? That worked really oh. too well. <laughs> oh man, crap music for crap words. I love it. <laughs> it really did kind of spice him up. Oh yeah. It did, yeah. it did. I mean, the, the without without that, I mean music. that guy is as dry as the Sahara, man. 
this this, this accent, stuff oh, is by far the united states worst export yeah definitely we created yeah. this garbage and we have exported it to the rest of the world it is by yep. far the worst thing that has ever come out of this country oh it's it's an absolute cancer in the body of christ you know it and you're right we've we've exported it all over the place and in the yep. uh yeah and, and the, i don't know if you were hearing what he was saying over that 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 just sweet sweet track that was back in the background <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, he was talking about how Mary was a vessel and we're vessels, how Moses was taken up to in, in glory. We're and we're like Moses. We're like Mary, man. I mean, this is talk about scratching, itching ears. But uh, all right, let's um, I'm shaking layers so you can. So you can what? So you can what? I, I don't know. I, I didn't give this prophecy. This... <laughs> Hang on a second. Here we go. Dancing. Oh. Yeah, dancing, that counts. This is dancing, tribal dancing, there. man, here. This is Gloria Zion. Prophetic flag. Yeah, it's Gloria Zion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tall flag. Yeah, I, I, every time I see this stuff, I cannot help but think that this is some, hot, some kind of a voodoo ceremony, you know? All right. I mean, they even sounds like a demon woman no, in the background. They're speaking in tongues. You got to translate. They are speaking oh, in yeah. Tongues. I need a translation. Oh, I feel a release. I release. Yes, yes. I, I don't know. I heard a curse. No, yeah, 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 you heard it wrong. Okay. Ah. It was definitely a release. I just need double now. <laughs> <laughs> layers for I have a people that's rising and I say there's been layers and layers and layers over you but I say now I'm doing the shaking and you're coming through up up through layers that have tried to keep you buried rise up and come through you know I, I just I'm going to say something these people have absolutely zero fear of God. Yep. That's zero fear right. of God. They put words in God's mouth that he did not say. They mm -hmm. do not love God. They have no reverence of God. They have no fear of God. They yeah. disdain the very Holy Spirit that they claim to, who they claim to lift up. It, yep. is, it is these people who have such a diminished low view of the Holy Spirit of God. And they would look at people like us, cessationists, oh, you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. You don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do the contrary. Yeah, do it's, the contrary. it's quite the opposite. It yep. is quite the opposite. I, I do not believe, my view of the Holy Spirit is such that I do not believe that someone can be indwelt by him and teach the things they teach blaspheme him the way they blaspheme him, put words in his mouth. He did not say, be proven to be false prophets over and over and over and over, have no prick of conscience and continue in their sin. They continue yep. to bring reproach on the name of Christ and the gospel and the Holy Spirit. They do not love him. They, they, they have no reverence for the Holy Spirit, none, zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off on it. I just, it, no, no, but, I, no, no, please do. Because the, the reality here is, is that not only are these not words from the Holy Spirit, if, if this were really from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a blathering idiot incapable of coherent uh, communication. Right. right. It's you know? absolutely blasphemous. Yes. To, to, they to mock him. God. It's mocking him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's mocking God. Absolutely, it's mocking God. Yep. Yep. All right, let's uh, let's see here. Okay, this guy is about as dry as they get. Um, this is uh, Ke Kevin Bridges, the prophetic word for December 2020. Nice photography. I'm uh -huh. looking to December. I see birds returning from the winter, and I see the rising of the sun. The Lord says to you, I'm returning that which has been taken away. I'm bringing restoration to you. I am bringing forth the light of the new day. I'm bringing forth a new beginning. Don't look to the past. 
Don't look to the patterns of that which has been in the last season, but look at the change which is coming. For just as when the birds return, you know that the spring is here. Just as the sun rises, you know the new day is here. So, Does he realize that in the northern hemisphere, the birds just left like North Dakota? You know, I mean. No, this prophecy is for the southern <laughs> hemisphere only. It's for Australia. Hey, oh, Australia okay. Is fake. Australia's so. fake. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. You can't believe in Australia, you know, because flat earth. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I do I do think it's hilarious that over the past couple of weeks we've upset the KJV only group, the flat earthers and and the and the Christmas Karens. So, there seems, um, hey, if there was a Vine Venn diagram, there'd be a heck of a lot of overlap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, everybody group. hates Rose bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's uh move along here. I okay, back to Gloria of Zion. Yeah, okay, rise words. up. Oh. Okay, now real quick, I gotta ask a question. Just a clarifying question, pop quiz here: uh, If a body is in a shallow grave, is that body still alive or is that body dead? Depends who who buried it in the mob or. Uh... <laughs> Generally, I'm gonna go with. I just you know my, my gut feeling on this is that if a body's in a shallow grave, it doesn't matter how shallow it is; it's still a corpse, oh, right? Yeah, we, still there. We would hope so. We would hope so. If it's not, okay. it will be soon. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, because generally it's a little hard to breathe when you're even in a shallow grave. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's take a listen then with that clarifying thing in mind. She did say six feet she deep. Did yes. say, we have the word deep. deep. We have the word deep. deep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ah. yeah. That works. Yep. All right. Um, did you hear her say that uh, the Lord says, ask me where you're buried? <laughs> um, I heard ask I, me what those graves are. But uh, Yeah. Let, let, let me, let's just back this up just a little bit. Ask me where you have been buried. <laughs> yeah. Ask me yeah. where you have been buried. Um, uh, come- Justin, where have you been buried? I, I, you know, if I have been, then and then I'm in heaven. This is a real disappointment because I, I was really hoping heaven would be a lot better than this. <laughs> better than wanna, Montana, huh? Yeah, better than really Montana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. For today and every day is a day of resurrection. And I say, I know those that went before you in your bloodline. I what went into the ground with them and I know what tried to be resurrected in you decree right now ain't decree. no re- decree, decree. Yep. Yeah. I need an activation yeah you probably do do we have that anywhere uh, you, you know the thing that's oh. funny about this it's like they're so close they are they're, they're like so close to baptismal theology here they're talking about daily resurrection and they're talking about being buried but they're talking about like generational curses and not yeah. being buried in the waters of your baptism yeah no it's it's totally different concepts it's altogether so, it's so weird it's like it's like they've heard somebody talk about baptism and now they're just throwing uh, yeah, all of those yeah. words at something else yeah, I mean, I mean, they clearly have some concept of what you know Romans six says. It's just they're misappropriating everything, yeah. and just it's like they're they take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, they stick it into the prophetic blender and hit frappy, you know, and then just, put it into the microwave. Yeah, yeah. it's it's weird. Babe, gonna hold me down. When they be- Hang on a second. I want to try to be resurrected in you. Decree right now. Ain't no grave gonna hold me down. Ain't no grave gonna hold me down. I mean, technically, in the long run, yes. Well, here's the thing: Um, if it weren't for Christ calling me out of that grave uh, when He returns in glory to judge the living and the dead, I'm pretty much staying there, you know. Uh, And everybody is. You know, I feel like we should almost play that—that like you know, 
make a short snippet of that video, save it, load it to the internet, and let it loop and keep going for a, and then Chuck Pierce will eventually go you know, the way everyone else does, and you know, he won't be able to call himself out of that gray willy. Yeah, well, we'll we'll put this in the archives of things to re, you know to revisit in like twelve years or something. All right, we've already got we've already gone German here. Oh, we've gosh. already done that. I don't want to do this. Oh no, not Ryan Lestrange. Oh, oh he really looks like Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm not sure what he did there. He's out of focus, and it looks like it, the the. He's not exposed properly here. Oh, well, all right. Let's Ryan Lestrange with a Monday word, and my Monday word is don't hide the broken parts. Don't hide the broken parts. I was reading this story about Jesus the other day, and it just struck me in Mark chapter 1. It says, a leper came to him, beseech him, falling on his knees before him, saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You know, leprosy under Levitical law was off limits. You couldn't touch a leper. You were not supposed to touch them. They were deemed unclean. Leprosy is an ugly disease. It's a broken thing. It causes parts of the flesh to literally be eaten away. And so this man came to Jesus. He summoned. It reminds me of that song, Leprosy. I'm not half the man I used to be. All my skin is falling off of me. Oh, leprosy came suddenly. Oh. Kiss me quick before I lose my upper lip. I don't even have a nose to pick. Oh, leprosy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Justin. <laughs> so, much for, so much for sweet dreams tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, my friend. You come to the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't know what came over me. Yeah. Sorry. Right, let's keep going. I recognize here. the power Jesus had, the mercy Jesus had, but the law said you can't touch this man. But I love what Jesus did. He didn't shy away from it. The Bible says, move with compassion. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. And he said, I am willing to be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Now, this is the thing. So many times, we hide the broken parts. We go into worship and we try to hide the fact that we're discouraged. We try to hide the fact we're frustrated. We try to hide the fact we got wounded through the affairs of life and we come to the Lord and we put on this show. But God is saying, I don't want you to hide the broken parts. You know what? Jesus was a rule breaker. The rule was don't touch the leprous man. Uh, was Jesus a rule breaker, Justin? A rule break? No, I'm I'm pretty sure by definition, uh, Jesus never broke any of the laws of God. I, I mean, you run into some really serious theological problems when you go down that road. I mean, yeah, very- and you turn Jesus into a rule breaker. Now he's breaking yeah. the commandments. Um, so, and yeah, I, now I always like to point out when I preach texts like that that you you know you 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 set up why what the mosaic covenant says that you know that you cannot touch somebody who is a leper a leper uh was required by god to engage in social distancing and to mask up when you look at the mosaic covenant it requires a leper to hold their hand over their face like this and shout out that they're unclean and you can and, you know when you understand what the mosaic covenant says there you have christ not only touching lepers but also touching the beer of a dead person and you can just see, I was like saying, look at it in slow, here it is in slow motion, you see Jesus reaching out his hand to touch the leper, and you can see his disciples going, no, Jesus, no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, it, it, and of course, the, it, nothing can make Jesus unclean, when Jesus touches somebody, somebody who's unclean becomes clean, you know, and so yeah. he's not a rule breaker, at no point can you ever accuse Jesus of being unclean. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, this is just bad theology, but this is his Monday prophetic word, you know, so this is approved. This apparently is approved all the way up to the top. I you know, I've, that, I've read I, Mark I, 1 many times. I've never seen that meaning in that text before. It's um, Yeah, yeah. They do have a tendency to pervert God's word, do they not? So, fresh you know, revelation. Right. Yeah. But the only Jesus rules that Jesus abide. broke were the ones that the Pharisees made up. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, he, he refused broke a lot to of keep the laws the, of man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he refused to keep those uh, Pharisaical laws. So. Yeah. Yeah. By those rules, because he was grace in flesh. And I believe today there's grace in your. No, 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 no. Jesus is God in human flesh. Great. Did he say grace in flesh? He's, he said grace in flesh. That's 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 a that's a bad theology right there. Um, yeah. yeah, he's God incarnate. 
you know, you can't say he's grace incarnate. That's not that's not a right way to talk about Christ. No, no, not at all. He's he's God incarnate. It, yep. Yeah, this is this is heading down the wrong path on all kinds of different directions. The mercy of God wants to flow into your life, and you might have parts of your family. The mercy of God wants to flow, huh? Your marriage, your mind, your emotions that is seemingly broken. And I'm telling you, Jesus doesn't want you to put it away and then come to him and try to be whole. Jesus wants you to simply come and say, Lord, I need help. Lord, if you're willing, touch this part of my life. He's not afraid of the mess. He's not afraid of the ugly parts. He's yeah, but the things he's describing, I you know, that as far as things going wrong in somebody's life, you know, the root of a lot of that stuff is sin. You know, what I'm not hearing is any need for repentance to be forgiven mm. uh, for those kinds of things. It's like, nope. yeah, there's, there's a reason why you got the you got some messed up pieces in your life. It's because you're sin you're sinning. You know. Uh, all right. You know, me, in, um, in, in the charismatic movement, just while we're talking about that, in the charismatic movement, you see, sin is not something that you commit against a thrice holy God. Sin is something that prevents you from having your best life now. Sin is something that just holds yeah. you. Back. It prevents you from being happy. It's never portrayed in such a way that it's a it's an offense. It's a vertical offense against the thrice holy God that incurs. That's this right. Righteousness. That's not dealt with. Yeah, no, I I completely agree with you. And that's the thing. It's like you know you, you do you do understand that you're sinning against God, and uh, you know you look at the, uh, the account of David and Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite, you know, and the murder that took you know that happened there. And you know God basically you know saying that you you despised my word, mm-hmm. and uh, and God Himself was offended, and God Himself sent Nathan. God Himself you know issued the the, the discipline uh, that uh, that David would receive, and God Himself through the prophet Nathan uh, even gave uh, David an absolution and told him that his you know that he would be that he's forgiven and that he would not die for what he did. But the thing is, is that you know. Sin is not just some thing that you you just got to work out so that you can have better results. Sin is the it's it's the condition that causes us to sin. So yeah, it's, it's a little d- deeper there. All right, a little bit of a note here. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, she's formerly Princess Bola Adelani. We we used to call her Princess Ebola, and uh, and she's been promoted. All right, so uh, Josh thinks she got a battlefield promotion because we know that the last prophecy bingo. She is no longer princess; she's queen Bola. So um, we're not sure what the prophetic protocols are regarding prophetic royalty. Uh, so you need to keep that in mind, Justin, as we listen to Queen Bola and her um, and her latest prophetic word. You know, uh, I always assumed that. I always assumed that she was calling herself princess as like the the whole like daughter of the king thing. Yeah. But now that she's going for queen, I'm not sure where that. I don't. I don't know. I, mean, I, I see. It makes, makes me wonder. It does have some weird implications, and, and I, my question is: Are the Roman Catholics offended uh, because you know yeah. uh, the Virgin Mary is supposed to be the queen of heaven? So <laughs> here, and here you is is a Ebol, is Ebola the queen of Earth? I mean, I I'm not sure how how these territorial kingdoms, queendoms things work. You know, I think she she's hankering for the empress uh, empress uh, title. You know, she's going for that. Don't give her she's any the holy, ideas. She's the holy prophetic empress. <laughs> the holy prophetic empress. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag <real> empire. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly the picture of humility here, is she? <laughs> No, 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 and she doesn't teach that either. All right, no. let's let's listen in here. This, I think, this is our final prophecy for the day. Greetings to all of you. So I'm gonna dive into this word today. I'm here today. Hello, come on now to announce a new season to you. My God, my God, my God, my God. Hey, Macarena. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I was just wondering if she was going to do that. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing she does. She pats herself on the back and does the Macarena. I don't understand it at all. You know. I want to announce your new season. Hashtag new season. Season and new season are a prophecy. Uh, bingo words. 
season is here. A new season is here. Amen and amen. And I've been trying to get this word across to us for the last month or so, okay? For the last month. But, you know, I feel like many of you are yet to catch it, okay? Praise God. Many of you are yet to do what? Catch it with your spiritual ears. And you know the what the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It doesn't mean anything that you're talking about. It no, sounds that's like mis- she, does she mean we, catch it like a virus? I I don't know this. I, we need another. We need wow. another category. Misappropriated scripture. You know. That's all. Uh, that's all of it. That's just like that's might that's as well everything. just be the free space. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, that counts. I guess you're right. I have to keep repeating it so that hopefully you will catch it. Amen. Praise God. And this is it. This is the announcement. This is the proclamation. This is the prophetic declaration that your season of isolation is over. Oh, way to go. Wait, wait, she's going to do the Macarena. My God, (laughs) my God, my God. Did you hear? Hey, Macarena. Hey, look, it's the vaccine that I totally didn't prophesy was going to happen. Yay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. uh, Justin, how's this year worked out for uh, the, the, uh, the prophets this year? 2020 has been an absolute wrecking ball to the charismatic movement on every conceivable level. On the I agree, yeah. On every conceivable level. I mean, it 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 should 2020 should be, though it won't be, but it should be the absolute end of the charismatic movement because every single one of these charismatic prophets and that's redundant but the every single one of them has been proven to be a complete and abject failure yep on every level they none of them saw covid coming none of them saw uh the riots coming they prof- all of them prophesied that Donald Trump would win reelection and yep. in a landslide now i know there's there's you know fraud and all that kind of stuff but it's not looking real good. Uh, they, they have, yeah, I mean, you know, they decreed the end. Of course, Kenneth Copeland and uh, all the Bethel guys, Bill Johnson and Cheon and uh, uh, Sean Boltz and Chris Valentine, they all decreed the end of COVID-19 back in late March. Uh, here we are. So, yep. But it's not going to be the end of it. It's just going to be a bump in the charismatic road. Uh, and the reason it's not going to be an end to it, Chris, unfortunately, is that these false prophets are in and of themselves part of God's judgment on yep. people. Yep. Uh, it's what God said in Jeremiah 5, and uh, is it verse 32, Jeremiah 5, 32, 33? Uh, I have seen a horrible thing in the land. The, the prophets prophesy falsely. They rule on their, the priests rule on their own authority. And my people love it so. Yep. My people love it. That this is what people want. They, they, when you look at these massive crowds following, you know, Chuck Pierce and and all these all these other charlatans, they're that's what they want. They will not endure sound doctrine. They they want to have teachers who tickle their ears, and so these false prophets are in and of themselves part of God's judgment. Yep. And God is giving them in judgment what they want. They don't want yeah. sound doctrine. They don't want the word. They don't want to study scripture where God actually can be heard. They don't want that. And so, um, yeah, it is It is an absolute train wreck. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, w- w- you know, I, a lot of people send me videos that, and they want me to review them. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I, by the way, I appreciate that. Don't stop sending the videos. Please do. I, and somebody sent me a video of Ken Copeland recently having people put their hands on their head uh, if they were having male yeah. pattern baldness and yeah. commanding the hair to grow. And and I, w- I watched this thing and thought, you know what? The fact that there are people who are dumb enough to do this and are listening to this fellow or even sitting under his teaching after what happened in March, I mean – you deserve yeah. this, and you know, you and, and the thing it. is, you absolutely deserve this. He's making a fool of you, and the only thing he wants is his next private jet. I'm sure you guys can make that happen, 
and uh, and and it's just absolutely insane. But you think about you know Second Thessalonians, where it says that God will send a strong delusion because yep. they did not love the truth. They you know, right. and, and and so it, it, they're the laughing stock of the world. Yep. And still, they are carrying on as as if it's business as usual, and their followers make it possible for them to do that. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. That is exactly right. And you know, let, to give you an idea of of the scope of this. Earlier this year, Kenneth Copeland made a statement. I have it in one of my earlier videos from earlier this year. But he actually made a statement that they are expecting uh, ministry revenue of. $300 million for the year 2020. That's what they're expecting. $300 what? million dollars for one year. One Good year. Night. Now, I just, uh, out of curiosity, I, I called when I heard Kenneth Copeland say that, I called up Phil Johnson and, and I said, <laughs> I told Phil, I said, hey, Phil, I'm putting this video together. This is what I just heard Kenneth Copeland Say, I said, by comparison, I said, what? Give me an idea of what the ministry, the operating ministry, or the um, you know the operating budget uh, for Grace to You is, and it's less than it's less than ten percent of that. Well, south yeah. of ten yep. percent. Yep. And and Grace to You is is massive and and has done, in in my estimation, probably more to champion sound doctrine and expository preaching just the sheer scope of that ministry than any other single ministry, um, you know, arguably in, in the history of the, of Christianity, just the scope of it. Yeah. And, and you think in, in one year, Kenneth Copeland's ministry, someone is outlandish and buffoonish as he is and who makes such an absolute fool of himself over and over and over his, his revenue 10 over 10 times that. So, yeah. I mean, and, and, it, yeah, it's it's it's, it's not it's nuts. And then you know, and then Chuck Pierce, I think Kozar was telling me that uh, you know he did the research on Chuck Pierce, and this guy makes more than a half a million dollars a year, saying nothing, nothing. Mm. He says nothing. No, but he says it convincingly. Yes. I mean, what was it? I mean, Jesus Christ himself was tempted in the desert 40 days. And he like, you know, and what was it the devil said? If you just fall down and worship me, then I'll give you all of the kingdoms of the world and this, that and the other. Yeah. So, I mean, the people that are literally doing the work of the devil are being blessed by the devil. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they're they're having their best life now. You know, the problem is is that life happiness is the thing they have to worry about. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Yep, All happening. right. Yep. So Justin, I want to thank you for uh, coming on being a good sport and I'm I'm a little I'm a little sad that you beat me. Um, <laughs> well, we haven't given out the bonus words yet. Yeah, I know. So uh, so we do, at the end of uh, prophecy bingo we give out two bonus words and uh, and here here's the thing. In order to get the one bonus word you have to be a subscriber. In order to get the other bonus word, you have to ring the bell. If you have not subscribed, you haven't rung the bell, you don't get these words. Yeah, And you say, well, you cheat, Rose, bro. I make all the rules, and I am I am the pirate. I can do whatever I want. And so that's how this works. So I'm going to pick one word, and I'm going to get let Joshua pick the other. So, oh, yeah. all right. So I pick the word double. Double, double is the uh, is the word, and uh, if you right. would, if you, if you pulled up my card, you would see that that means I have a bingo. That means I have to prophesy. But before we do that, <laughs> I want to know what your uh, what your uh, bonus word is, Josh. Well, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of torn. Do I go with curse or do I go with activation? Oh, go with activation. All right, activation it is, and that I means I also get a bingo. There you go. All right, so all right now. <laughs> Hang on, I got, I got, I got to channel my inner cuckoo bird and uh, get ready to prophesy here. That can't be that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> You're always doing that. Yeah, right, right, right. All right, so, so here we go. I, I feel the covering coming over me. Oh, the rhema is really flowing at the moment. Oh, I just got a download in the atmosphere, and it means we're gonna have a double release this year for provision, prosperity, and upgrades, and all you can expect this to happen right now as an open heaven portal has opened up over us. There we go. 
Well done, well done, well done. Wow. It's better yeah, than uh, anything Chuck we... Pierce has done. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't make even a fraction of what that guy makes. Of course, you have like only a fraction of the overhead either. Yeah, so that's true. true. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get him some real, fa- you know, real fancy shirts like well, that. I don't, I don't know. A Hawaiian shirt. I think what he needs is he needs prophetic flag twirlers. No, no, <laughs> no. All right. All right. I want to hear your prophecy, man. I want to hear it. All right. What voice am I doing this time? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you got to do strong, bad man. All right, strong bird it is then. You know, since yeah. that's our particular, like you know, not copyrighted uh, version. Oh yeah, strong bird. <clears throat> Sorry. Strong bird. <laughs> uh, Hello, people. I'm here to decree that there will be wealth and victory flowing from the heavens down to everyone below in a pure activation of grace and love and mercy from the Lord Jesus. That makes too much sense. That did make me- <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I prophesied too clearly. <laughs> oh, but wait, I'm sensing double curses and blessings at the same time. <laughs> no, all right. Uh, all right. Oh, you get the idea. All yeah. right. So thanks for coming on, Josh and Nikki. Thank you for your time, Justin. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, we, I look forward to uh, being able to release this in, into the atmosphere of YouTube. <laughs> oh, <In> no. the... <laughs> Chris, in the, in, the, in the prophetic, in the prophecy quoted by Dr. Michael Brown, I heard uh, not too long ago, keep on trucking. That's a prophetic word from God. <laughs> keep on trucking. <laughs> I, I will. I, I, Loaded I, up I, that I now own a 2006 uh, Ford F250, so I, I I can do that uh, now. So yeah, uh, it's a yeah. it's an accurate word. Uh, yeah. With, so with there heated, you go. With heated go. seats for the dark winters. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, you, I, you gotta love the seat warmers, man. You gotta <laughs> love the seat warmers. So. All right. Well, let me let me do this. I'm going to uh, I'm going to meet you guys, and I'm going to sign off here. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, watching. And uh, if you would like to share this video, you've enjoyed it. All the information on how you can share the video is down below. And let me sign off by saying, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ, his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.